you're here with a fairly simple message. How has that been received? Uh, man, I think it's been received pretty well, um, certainly by the rest of the business community. Um, part of my goal here, besides announcing our commitment to be net zero on a science-based uh, targets um, focus by 2050, uh, is to learn from other business leaders. So I've been able to spend time with the other 86 companies that have also joined us uh, in that step up uh, and talk to them about the amazing things that they're doing and learn from them about how they're attacking their targets and vice versa. So uh, it's certainly been received extremely well on, on that front. And talk to me about the political front, because that is obviously getting a lot of the news. And, and indeed, that is where the, the climate change push needs to be led from. So how, is, how has it been engaged there? Um, look, it's been challenging on that front. Um, I think it's clear that all parts of society need to come together to, to attack this problem. Right? It's, it's one of the greatest challenges, um, probably the greatest challenge that humankind faces today. And we're going to need government and business and individuals public and private sector to kind of come together to solve this. It is certainly harder if public sector doesn't show up, um, but at the same time, we, we, we can't control that, right? Um, popular opinion and other things, and hopefully business in this case is showing some leadership. We've got some a whole series of fantastic Australian businesses here that are making commitments and driving things forward on green energy finance, on individual commitments for the business. Um, and so we're we're hopeful that can um, serve as an example and, and, and move the government forward. Now, you yourself have been quite scathing on Australian politicians and said that they, you know, the leadership there cannot be relied upon at all to take uh, action on climate change and that business to some extent needs to fill that void. What does that actually look like in practice? What do businesses need to do and are they ready to step up to it? Um, look, I think you can see this in the, in the US as well, right, in other cases where um, you had the uh, we're still in sort of group, which I know Bloomberg led and is, is a big part of that where, uh, you know, if a country decides not to live up to its commitments, then business, states, cities, there's lots of other groups who can say, well, we're still going to meet those commitments, right? So I think one of the things for business is to say we have a role to play in doing our fair share of the lifting and, and moving our business forward, right? It's not just, oh, the government does all the work. Um, and then, you know, from the other point of view is, is yes, the government needs to uh, believe in that. I think my frustration in Australia particularly is we have massive opportunities in this area. Like it's, it shouldn't even be seen as like a, a tax or a problem for Australia. It should be seen as an opportunity. And if we can figure that out and get the leadership and the planning and other things correct, you know, it should be great for our economy, right? The green economy that we could create is just amazing and somewhat unparalleled on the planet, and we can't seem to get that aligned. But isn't that because of the age-old problem of there are so many industries with so much vested interest in not shifting into the green economy in Australia? Obviously, you have a huge mining industry, a huge coal industry. The political will to shift to something that would be so detrimental to those big big corporations is obviously is a difficult thing to muster. Look, I mean, it's up to politicians to be leaders, right, and to show leadership here. And from a planetary perspective, we have to get out of that. I mean, like Guterres was very clear, coal is done. We have to get out of coal straight up and down. There's no two ways, the science is very clear on this. So it's up to our political leaders to help us do that. And that doesn't mean just shutting it down tomorrow, but it does mean planning the transition, reliable, um, stable, let's say, policies, uh, and you know, just transition for the workers in those industries and everything else. There's, there's lots of planning that's required, but we, we're sort of doing none of that. Um, the other thing I would say is that we have a very um, complicated business sector when it comes to this, right? Because in finance and insurance and lots of other areas, Australia is actually very progressive on this stuff and very worried about climate change and moving forward. Um, even in the mining sector, um, like I'm incredibly pro-mining. If you look at the opportunities for Australia, right? In a green world, what are we going to make? Panels, batteries, all these sort of things. What do we make? Rare earth minerals, lithium, nickel, copper. We have just a phenomenal amount of opportunities before you get to sun and wind in mining. That doesn't mean that the fossil fuel parts of mining that are incompatible with a future climate, we, we, we don't have to transition out of and, and put together plans to transition out of. I just want to pick on this. You talked about batteries. Obviously, you famously had this bet that you lost with Elon Musk uh, a couple of years ago where uh, he said he could build a battery of a certain size in 100 days. You said he couldn't, and he did. Um, he's obviously a sort of standard bearer of sorts for this uh, push to be more green and more environmentally friendly for the long term. Um, and, and is representative of a lot of sort of people in the tech industry who are making these claims about where we should be heading. Is there a problem that people like Mr. Musk are sort of so uh, aloof and, and kind of otherworldly that 
perhaps it's hard for the average person to relate to them and say this is something we should be on board with. Sure. Look, I think um, in Australia we have some phenomenal examples of, again, where there should be an opportunity. So I absolutely agree. It, it can be hard to connect to Elon. He's, he's an awesome character, but, you know, um, he's not uh, your regular guy. Uh, uh, nor should he be. He's amazing for humanity, right? But but you have to have both regular connectivity and, and all sorts of parts of society. Um, Australia, we have some really interesting examples of this, right? So we have the highest penetration of household solar in the world. More people sleep per capita under a solar panel in Australia than anywhere else, right? So that's an army. That's a, that's a movement that can be moved. If you're sleeping under a solar panel, you understand this. Um, and when it comes to batteries, it's even more crazy. We have more batteries in Australia full stop residentially than anywhere else in the world, right? Than the rest of the world put together, more residential batteries, right? So we have this engaged population that understand these, these issues already in Australia. We've just got to get that aligned with, uh, you know, with stable government policy. Another area where you've been very strong with the government is saying that they need to do much more to position the country and the business sector, particularly for the sort of uh, the wave of technology that is going to come and disrupt not just tech and retail and some of the more sort of obvious industries, but in your mind, every industry eventually mm -hmm. is going to be a tech industry. Uh, are they doing enough? Um, look, we're working really well with the government on this area and, and trying to push forward. Obviously, we need, um, again, sensible policy, sensible settings on technology and technological issues. And these are complex topics of encryption and uh, uh, violent material and all sorts of other things. But we still need to be very engaged and to move that stuff forward so that it's a sensible place. Um, and secondly, we need to have a viable um, both tech industry and tech enabled every other industry in Australia, right? A simple stat I'd like to give is we're 1% of the world's GDP. If we're not 1% of the world's technology production, then we're going to be in trouble as an economy, right? As the economy moves more towards technology as a broad, it's the biggest industry in the world already. It's only getting bigger. We have to be producing some technology in Australia. It doesn't have to be all of it. But you'd argue we have to produce 1% of the world's technology to be 1% of the world's GDP. Um, and we need to you know, keep, keep moving the economy forward such that that's the case. And that's education, it's immigration, it's sensible uh, policy settings in, in all types of areas. Well, immigration, interesting, as you mentioned, because immigration obviously is a huge part of what allows some countries to be more successful at technology than others, because the tech worth, workforce, as we know, is entirely transient and will go where they feel the best opportunities are, the most interesting companies are. So uh, what does a country like Australia have to do to attract that workforce uh, to such an extent that it can be at that 1% level or higher for, um, for producing tech GDP? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we're doing a relatively good job recently. We've had some, some big changes in the last couple of years on immigration as it relates to the tech industry, um, which is actually in, in pretty good spot, can always be a bit better. But like, to be fair, over the last couple of years, it's, it's in a really good spot. Um, I think uh, most of the policy settings are pretty sane around, you know, you must invest in education and local and the way that we think about it at, at Atlassian is very simple, is that we need to invest in the talent coming up from the, from the, from the bottom, right? So uh, high school and then tertiary education, we need to have lots of graduates. <coughs> we have lots of talent in Australia, that's not the problem. What we don't have is lots of experience. So the higher up the company you get, the more we don't have a lot of people in Australia with 10 years worth of technology experience. So we have to import those and then we make sure internally that when we import, say, half of a, a, a level or an area, um, the half that we import are helping the other half and all of the graduates and everyone else to up level. Um, and that's how we grow the economy. Hopefully that talent stays in Australia. You know, uh, it's a great lifestyle. It's a great place to live. Um, there's a lot of sensible jobs. The economy is obviously doing uh, uh, pretty well if you look over a sort of three decades uh, period. So, you know, we're hopeful if we can get that um, sort of talented individual into the country, they'll, they'll stay and, and long term contribute to the economy. Plus an annoyingly successful cricket team at the moment as well. You get that as well. So look, let's just let's just end on this. Uh, and another sort of aspect that's very common to tech and big tech, particularly, is is wealth and to some extent wealth disparity. You see that here in the U.S. Obviously, you see it in Europe, and in Australia too. Uh, you yourself, one of the, the sort of wealthiest people in Australia, uh, along with your co-founder, is there a responsibility on the tech industry to do a better job of? redistributing the wealth, but also explaining uh, some of the tensions that come with that kind of disparity? Um, look, I think it's, it's hard to argue there's responsibility on the tech industry. I think it's a responsibility broadly, right? Um, 
wealth inequality is obviously a huge issue globally, um, and Australia has its share of challenges. We we arguably do better than the US and some other places, but we still, you know, we have no shortage of challenges we could do there. Um, inside the tech industry, I'd say we, we probably do pretty well. My guess is with equity and options and ownership for you know all, all employees and everything else that. Um, and probably generally lifts it above the average, I would guess, but I wouldn't say I'm fully informed on that versus other other industries. Um, but it's certainly a challenge that we need to um, we need to look at tackling continually on a on a global economic basis.